Absolutely. Okay. Uh, it's pretty short and sweet presentation mm -hmm. here. So 20 year old male referral. 20 year old male was told that he had a skin tag in his retina that might cause a retinal attachment and vision was found to be 2016 OU pressure of 15 OU. Okay. And go ahead. All right, fundus photo of the right eye here. Um, media looks clear, nerve looks unremarkable, vessels also normal. How many straight actually? Nice retinal sheen there. And then the macula has looks like a little bit of artifact. Um, or is that maybe whitening there that could be relevant? No, it's just bright. It's just sorry, right. I'll do 20 year old artifact. Um, and then periphery and then, uh, is normal. Okay, great. <laughs> 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 Oh, now we're looking more superiorly, same eye. Um, we have uh, what looks like um, a very peripheral, superior, uh, dark, darker spot with a central, uh, whiter area to it. Um, and then another white spot, I think that's an artifact again in the middle of the image. Yes. Yeah. Uh, now zoomed in on that little lesion. Uh, again, kind of circular. Uh, darker surrounding area and central whiter uh, spot to it. And it looks like blood, but it's not. So it looks red around it, but it's really just pigment because of the camera. This is Claris, right? Yeah, Claris. That's it. That's the other eye. That's the other eye. Looks uh, unremarkable. So you want to go back to the close up? Go, yep, there you go. So what is that? Um, this would be a little atrophic hole. Um, could be. Uh, it's elevated when you look at it. It's elevated. Um, it looks like it's at the end of the vessel. It would be like a, a mini a little microaneurysm. A little, um, uh, Go back to the maybe the zoomed out one a little more. This looks funny. This one. Yeah, that's a little better. Maybe a chirpy, a small chirpy. Um, we have ashocytoma, hammertoma. Anybody else want to throw in? It looks like a ram to me. Small, small hemorrhage. Yeah. That's another senior, Jacob. Uh, maybe like, like no, a little retinal tunnel. Yeah. All right. So Maverick, go ahead. So yeah, differential diagnosis and skin retinal tear, atrophic hole, vitro-retinal tuft, and also just threw a retinal scar and last generation, peripheral cystoid generation and meridonial fold. And it was a cystic retinal tuft. So. Good job, Jacob. Your sure, retinal tufts are <laughs> retinal tufts are small peripheral <laughs> focal areas of elevated glial hyperplasia associated with vitreous or zone zonular attachment and traction. Uh, retinal pigment epithelial hyperplasia may surround the tuft, and tractional tufts are classified according to the anatomical, pathogenetic, and clinical distinctions into the following groups: the cystic retinal tuft, non-cystic retinal tuft, and the zonular tractional retinal tufts. So I just put in some examples of all three here. So uh, this is straight from BCSC, their uh, image for cystic retinal tuft with a small round hole. And then here's their picture for non-cystic retinal tuft. Uh, it shows cluster of white surface nodules, characteristic gross appearance in local non-cystic retinal tufts. If you look, those are way out. They're actually yeah. in the vitreous base. There's, mm -hmm. they're like, they're, Cause you're looking at the ore on top. Mm -hmm. So those are, those are not, Worrisome. And even further forward, we you have zonular tractional retinal tufts. So small uh, zonular tractional tuft with cystic base. And it says to note the tuft points anteriorly towards the peripheral lens because the zonular tractional tufts refer to a common phenomenon caused by aberrant zonular fiber extending posteriorly to be attached to the retina near the aura serrata and exerts traction on the retina at its base, typically located nasally. Uh, risk of retinal tears formation is around 2%. Periodic long-term review generally recommended. So vitreo retinal tufts prevalence uh, for cystic tufts is 5% of adults. Non-cystic tufts, 72% of adults. Zonular tractional tufts present in up to 15% of adults. Those probably are pathology studies. 
Yeah. I, I, so the pathology studies generally overestimate a lot. You know, so what you see clinically versus pathology can vary. Because I can't imagine someone did skeletal depression on that many patients to figure out. The, all right. So that. Right. So cystic retinal tufts or CRT are strong vitro-retinal adhesions commonly present in, in both small round holes and horseshoe tears can occur. Uh, and they are unrecognized simply because of uh, low use of wide field imaging. And uh, CRT are present in up to 5% of the population of those 20% present with bilateral CRT and may be the cause of lesion in 5 to 10% of eyes with retinal attachment. Though the risk of RD in a given eye with CRT is probably well under 1%. And treatment is simply just prophylactic uh, laser treatment is not recommended. And it's simply just routine follow-up. And that's all I got. So short and sweet there. That was very good, Maverick. So the reason I wanted you guys to see this, we always talk about lattice regeneration, like lattice, 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 lattice. And, and about my learning, which is ancient now, is about half of retinal detachments have a predisposing lesion and half of them don't. Of the half that do, Okay, so if you look at all retinal attachments, because I can't do the math, if you look at all retinal attachments, 30% are associated with lattice, 10% with cystic retinal tufts, and about 10% with retinoschisis. Mm -hmm. So the three predisposing things that are most important, I do a lecture on this at some point if we get to it, is lattice, cystic retinal tufts, and retinoschisis. And then 50% of retinal attachments just happen. There's nothing there. If you look hard at your retinal tears, you'll notice on a fair number of the flat tears, a little thing at the at the flap, and that's a cystic the retinal. The yeah, the peak yeah, of the flap, yeah. and that's a cystic retinal tuck. So it's not uncommon to see a tear with a little tuck on it. And so it's just nice to know, and but you never see them now. I love that was I love getting yeah. a picture of that. In, in the BCSC, it mentions like lattice, um, vitro retinal tuck, and then radial bay. Um, or Maria folds and then enclosed the oral bay. Okay. I don't think it's predisposed. Yeah. I don't know don't where are they predisposed. Predisposed. That's just what it's yeah, like. Yeah. I'm going to have to change my lecture. No, the, uh, those, your lecture is fine. They don't be disposed. I heard 30% of retinal detachments have cystic retinal tuft. Yeah. But it's still extremely rare that a cystic retinal tuft or lattice causes a detachment. The norm Bayer, yeah, Bayer did all that work. I have his uh, his volume at home. He he was he was just a uh, little retina practitioner practitioner in, uh, in California, a small and and a well known town. I can't remember. Where did uh, Bayer? Uh, he was around L.A. I think. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> small town, small town. You know, he was in Bakersfield. Yeah. Oh. And uh, he. Uh, he, he just took that golden lens and he would photograph with the old cameras we had. And then he'd follow. And so in the old days, we used to treat everything. They treat everything. They treat yeah, everything. Lattice got laser. Back when we started, it's very laser. Eddie, Eddie ever, uh, he just said, no, you don't have to. Right. I followed this for 30 years. And uh, he, he just, he just, and it's a good statistical because if you if you see that yeah, if you say 30 percent of retinal detachments are associated with lattice then you would think we should laser all the lattice we see to prevent retinal attachments then you realize only about one in 200 or one in 500 patients with lattice get a retinal detachment then you then it doesn't make nice. less. And then, but then, then the thing is, half of the people who get retinal attachment with the lattice don't get them where the lattice. Went. Right, that's the funny thing. So, so you're lasering like crazy. And then the last thing is, it's hard to fix retinas that have been lasered a lot. So nowadays we're pretty good at fixing retinal attachments. I almost never laser lattice, but but certain people do a lot. That was very.